Your friends are scrolling through short content, but you, my friend, you're here to learn. Welcome to Yara's Clips. I think you're the only person I've met till date in my own podcasting journey who has the ability to explain what RNAW is in its truest form. Okay. So I'll let you take it forward. Okay. I'll start at the beginning. Huh? All right. I'll start at the beginning of, let's say, the what was our intelligence apparatus at Independence? and how RAW evolved over a period of time. And um, we took over from the British, all the systems that they had, we took over. And to begin with, we had the Intelligence Bureau, which was responsible for inter external and internal intelligence. This is where I probe and ask you what the meaning of intelligence is. Intelligence is the uh, gathering information about the adversary, his plans, his intentions, his abilities, and uh, his likely move against you, against India, uh, to our detriment. So it is um, advanced knowledge, really, or, or sometimes even the background knowledge, and then assessments of what might he do. One is collecting hard intelligence, factual intelligence. Um, you know, you, that they've, they've made this uh, equipment, they've made this bomb, or they've made this new weapon. They've raised a new infantry division. Now, what does that mean to us? Then some experts will get together and decide that the raising of a division here means that they are expanding in a particular direction, mm -hmm. that they want to raise a mountain division, for instance. They're raising a mountain division. Obviously, they have intentions to use it in the heights. So, you know, then you, then you, or, 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 on, or on political issues and uh, who's going to win the next election in, in a particular country? What is our assessment? Who are the candidates? And what are they like? What is their attitude towards India? All that has to be fed into the system for the governments of the day to be forearmed, for equipped with this. In the beginning, all this work was done by the Intelligence Bureau. Then remember in 1962, we had the Chinese invasion. And um, we had a, we took a knocking there. Then we had 1965, the Pakistani invasion. They had sent in uh, so-called... Uh, uh, freedom fighters and, and uh, into Kashmir and uh, we pushed them back and then the famous move we made into uh, cross the uh, international boundary at Lahore and move the troops in which the Pakistanis did not expect but we were we, we had to do it because otherwise they were going to cut off Kashmir from us so this was the move and that changed the whole direction of the war in 65. But we were caught unawares, really. Okay. It was a surprise. Okay. And we, we succeeded in doing what we needed to do. It's, I think at that stage, the government started to think that uh, given the situation that we, we are in with an enemy on the one front and another enemy on the other front, one organization will not be able to handle it with full devotion because you go to do internal work too. So it was decided that there should be a new organization dealing only with external threats, not internal threats. Therefore, they decided to form the research and analysis wing. The research and analysis wing is, is RNAW, but normally people call it raw. Mm. But we prefer to call ourselves R and A W. Anyhow, that's that's a matter of detail. So the R A W was created in 1968. September 21, 1968 was the day we got the orders that this is now come into existence. And Mr. R N Kao uh, was the head of the organization. He remained in charge of the organization for nine years. And he saw it through its uh, raising and, and abilities. And the first major success RAW had was the 1971 war. 
with Pakistan over Bangladesh and Bangladesh was, Pakistan was split. We got Bangladesh. We, RAW helped the liberation fighters of Bangladesh, then East Pakistan in their overthrow of the Pakistani regime in Dhaka. So that was the first major success of RAW, not just in terms of intelligence, but intelligence operations, i.e. helping the Mukti Bahaini train them, equip them, send them in to fight the Pakistani regular forces. So that was what we did in the first few years of the existence. You spoke about hard intelligence, which is data about equipment or actual moves that the enemy is making. I'm assuming there is something called soft intelligence as well. Well, uh, hard intelligence is is either based on documents. Proof. Proof. Or it's based on um, audios or, you know, imagery. And, uh, all the modern gadgets that you have now. F photographs, imagery, audio recording, documented evidence, a letter from A to B. The other is that your source knows everything, but is not giving you document or, or proof for that. So that you have to now rely on him, on his information. By source, you mean a spy on the other side of the world? Yeah, somebody you've raised, somebody you've... Uh, okay cultivated, he's paid or otherwise, he's operating in behind, let's say, enemy lines. And he gives you information. He sends it to you by, by any means, you know, by code, by cipher, by letter, through, routed through another country because you don't let him do a direct exchange of information from A to B. Those days, in my days, when we joined, uh, when I joined in 1972, we didn't have any of these. There was no such thing as a mobile phone. You must, you know, like kids these days have all these equipment. We didn't have any of these. We didn't have, we didn't even have fax. Even teleprinters came later, or maybe around that time. So we were relying either on the information collected by the source and brought in or routed through somewhere else. Time was a constraint. I mean, it could take 10 days for him to deliver that information, Why? which time it might conceivably be old. Mm. He had the information, but he couldn't reach it to you, and therefore it is redundant. Okay. So you, these are, those are the pitfalls of that time. I remember we used to... There's something called topographical intelligence. That means you're collecting intelligence about the topography of the neighboring country. You're mapping it out. Mapping it out. You didn't have the facility to do it by satellite imagery. You had to do it on the ground. Hmm. Okay. So you had to send a guy in with equipment. So he'd go mile by mile, bridge by bridge, or culvert by culvert to collect topography. Then you put it together, piece it together, uh, it could take maybe a month or mm. two mm. to get that thing right. But nowadays, it's all so different. And you've got Google map and it tells you everything. <laughs> <laughs> Not everything, right? Well, it tells you a lot, lot uh, okay. that he wants you to know. <laughs> okay. Okay. So what I've gathered from your answer yeah. is that RNAW collects information about what's happening on the other side of the border. Uh, especially about activities that could be dangerous to India's security. Yeah. Uh, now, y'all are collecting information through multiple means, one of which is spies. Uh, I'm sure there are countless other means which you're probably not even able to talk about on a public platform. Uh, also, once you've collected that information, there is an analysis part of RNAW that tries predicting the near future or the next moves of the enemy. And y'all feed that intel to what I am assuming is the Indian military and uh, the PMO and maybe ISRO. I don't know. Well, I'll tell you uh, two things here. Okay. The meaning of security today is much wider. Okay. 
uh, it's it's not just military anymore it's not just the political aspects of what's happening there they are important they still remain important but you have um demography for it migrations if there is a a famine in the other country and those people start to come into your country that could be a potential security threat because, because they don't know who's coming in mm. okay you have uh, instances of uh, even water shortage the biggest threat to a country is if you cut off their water and one of the reasons why pakistan has adhered to the indus water treaty all these years that's the only treaty they have abided by with us is because they have a favorable deal on the treaty they get more water than they should according to the treaty even according to the treaty and we need to reevaluate the treaty why is it more favorable towards pakistan because we it was generosity you said that these rivers will flow into pakistan and these rivers and the southern rivers we would make use of but but we are not able to make full use of the rivers waters and they just flows in okay so we want to that 70 30 equation has to change but if we balance it out and make it 50 50 what happens ah uh, then they'll be then they they are not going to do it so easily they say that a change of the treaty is a is a is a act of war okay so we have to negotiate okay so we i suppose the government would at some stage go into it seriously they're talking about it but what's the point what will happen if we change it no the, the change is you are you are violating a treaty that you have signed so automatically you lose sympathy with a lot of people okay it's not the done thing i mean powerful countries do it all the time the united states of abrogate treaties it works off treaties when it feels like but mm. they can afford to do it okay we would prefer a negotiated settlement we would certainly want it but we hope that pakistan sees reason at the end of the day because right now they're in a, an awful mess so maybe now is the time to work that treaty out but that's i'm i'm getting ahead of my time i'm getting uh, No, that's all right. So we were talking of something else. Actually, I was going to say that the intelligence that intelligence agencies collect and put it into use is about ten percent of the total information that is available. Most of the information comes from open sources, which means what? Which is available to everybody. Everybody knows about it. it is the art of putting that intelligence that information together with with this additional information that we've got that gives you the quantum jump okay and tells you what might happen is there any chance you'd mention some of the open sources you mean like google maps or something yeah even google maps wow okay so google or, or, maps or social media really yeah if some a lot of intelligence agencies watch social media and write in it and write in it contribute to it okay it's a, it's a weapon of collection and a weapon of uh, influence you can psychologically impact yeah, you can you can you can twist the story around and you can make whatsapp can do it mm okay look at the kind of stories that you can get on whatsapp these days we don't know which one is true which one isn't is india a victim of uh chinese and pakistani intelligence agencies twisting narratives on social media i expect they are doing it i expect okay. they are doing it and i wouldn't be surprised if they are not doing doing this this is this is the game so if you enjoyed this video make sure you check out this playlist for more videos just like this it's the artist clips